Mr. Rickerman? Here. Mr. McDowell? Here. Mr. Duvall? Present. Mr. Badura? Here. Mr. Devine? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? Here. Thank you. Join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, at this time we would ask council to adopt the agenda holding item number four. So move. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. We would ask for any public input related to the agenda items as outlined. Seeing none, we ask council to approve consent agenda, and consent agenda items one through three and number five. So move. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Benjamin, at this time, we would ask you to open a budget public hearing. Um, we will move into ordinances first reading thereafter for the first two items, six and seven, uh, ordinance number 2019-38 to raise the revenue and adopt the budget for the City of Columbia, South Carolina for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020 as well as ordinance number 2019-039, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 23, Utilities and Engineering, Article 5, Water and Sewer Rates, Section 23, 143, Water Service Rates in Section 23, 149, Sewer Service Rates A and B. At this time, Ms. Um, Kaufman, our Budget and Program Management Director, will also come forward to give a brief presentation. Good evening. Good evening. We're here tonight for the um, public hearing of the City of Columbia fiscal year 1920 proposed budget uh, public hearing. There will be a presentation hopefully coming up soon on your screen. Uh, I'll go ahead and get started though as we are um, waiting for the presentations to start. Um, tonight we will be talking about uh, the proposed budgets for our general fund, our enterprise and business type funds, which include water and sewer fund, stormwater fund and parking fund, as well as our special revenues for hospitality tax, accommodations and the capital improvement program for water and sewer and stormwater. The proposed budget, as we, as we put together the budget every year, as we prepare for the budget, we start with some budget goals, mostly starting of course with Envision Columbia and the direction provided by City Council in the Envision Columbia focus areas. Our um, goals that we use in terms of preparing the budget. Sorry. We're having technical difficulties with the screen, which I hate that for this public hearing okay. for the public, but we will make copies of the presentation, Mr. Mayor. Okay. And we'll we'll get it streamed and on the website as soon so as So at least you're working to get it up maybe at all. Yeah. So one of the areas of the one of the budget goals that we work on, of course, is resiliency, and that's providing our services today while we're preparing for the long term. Not thinking about just what we need to fund today, but what also what services we have 
today and what programs we will need to carry on in the long run and also in terms of how we will address uh, our growing needs and our growing services. Um, also addressing those infrastructure needs and making sure that the infrastructure is in place so that we can continue to provide services to both our citizens, residents, and to customers of the city. Sustainability, and that's moving beyond a budget that's balanced, not looking at just what we need to do to balance the budget, but what we need to do to help make the budget sustainable for our long-term goals and to meet City of Columbia, City Council's Envision Columbia. Making those investments. Yeah. Oh, sorry, making investments in public safety and neighborhood improvement initiatives. We also want to make sure we're focusing on providing quality services, providing high quality municipal services efficiently and effectively, and responsibly as a basis for why we are here. Maintaining the competitiveness of the city's compensation plan to attract and retain employees. Um, they are one of the most critical pieces of our city's infrastructure, is this uh, if city employees to be able to provide the services that our citizens and residents and visitors expect on a daily basis. The total 1920 proposed operating budget for all funds is $357,363,657. Million, million. 43% of that represents the general fund, which is $152 million. The utility um, or enterprise and um, business type activities of water, sewer, stormwater, and parking fund make up another 57, 53% of the budget. And the remaining hospitality tax and accommodations is 4% of that total budget. Um, by the numbers, unfortunately, the, the graphics with regards to the city's budget is much more than just numbers and sense of, of cost, but it's also, it also represents our employees, it represents our, our, um, our services that we provide for our 133,000 plus citizens, our more than 140,000 water and sewer customers, our 5,100 businesses, um, and our million or so visitors we have on an annualized basis. The general fund budget for FY 1920 is proposed at 152 million, which is an increase of 4 million or 2.7%. It does not reflect an increase in property taxes. It's been the same property tax rate for the past 10 years. We also um, will be going through a reassessment in 2019 for Richland County and the Lexington County portion of the city We'll go through a reassessment in 2020. The budget um, presented today focuses on maintaining current service levels. The FY 1920 general fund revenues are a total of 150. Those revenues and transfers in are a total of 152 million or 4 million increase, 2.7 percent. Of that total, revenues represent 132 million, an increase of 2.2 percent. And transfers in total 19 are right at 20 million of the of the total but of the total budget, an increase of about 4 percent. Transfers in account for about 13 percent of the city's total um, revenue and transfers in budget. Property taxes are the um, largest portion of the general fund revenues, coming in at 59 million. We reflect an increase of 1.6 million or 2.8 percent. Business licenses and permits is the next largest source of revenue for the general fund. Combined, those total 42.42 million, an increase of 722,000, or less than two percent. And it re those also reflect a reduction from the um, franchise fee. We are anticipating a reduction in franchise fee um, in this coming fiscal year. Service charges and other revenues total 14.6 million, and then transfers and other financing sources coming in, as mentioned, is 19.9 million, which is an increase of 1.2, and that's a increase. Um, is coming solely from the increased use of fund balance for this coming fiscal year. General fund expenditures. Public safety represents 46% of the total general fund budget, followed by public works and parks and recreation. The public safety portion of the total $152 million general fund budget is 69 million or 3.4%. Public works is 21.6 million, is, a, is no change budget. General government, which includes departments of finance, human resources, legal, um, different administration offices, um, public information, city clerk's office, um, are, are several of the budgets in general government. Those represent 17.5 million or 1.2%. Parks and Recreation is 13.5 and that's 2%. Non-departmental and transfers out are 6.6%. That's an uh, increase of 11.7%. Again, that, that is related to um, the use of our um, capital improvement program and the lease 
purchase um, annual payment. Debt service is 8.7 <coughs> million or 4.7 percent change in the current fiscal year. Capital replacement is a re, um, the capital replacement program is a, is remaining at 8 million. Development services and planning is 3.6 million is no change, and community and econ economic development is 3.1 a 6.7 percent change. Overall, again, the general fund budget is 152 million and represents a 2.7 percent increase. Missy, on the, on the general property tax is $59 million. Does that include the local option sales tax? Yes, sir, that's inclusive of all property taxes. So it would be property taxes, um, homestead exemption, credit, the local option sales tax, all of those. How much of the $59 million is paid by the local option sales tax? About $27 million. Third of it. Probably more. About half. About Almost half. half. Okay, continuing on with our general fund highlights, I'll just get since we are um, without the technical abilities, I will just get through straight and talk more through the numbers. Um, general Missing fund. your infographics? I do have my infographics. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can't show my numbers, um, my city by the numbers, but it'll be available uh, in paper copy. And we'll be sure to be able to show this on the website too. Um, Police budget um, does reflect an expanded use of technology with ShotSpotter um, and some uh, uh, efforts towards um, replacement of our security camera, uh, upgrade of our security camera, uh, citywide security camera system. Over time to provide coverage at, at different trainings, uh, professional development and court attendance. Residential code enforcement, um, focus on proactive code enforcement and continuation of neighborhood initiatives with public works. Municipal court does reflect the addition of two court court clerks, facility improvements, as well as review of processes for efficiency and better operations. So I was just saying that the, the, the code enforcement is continuing efforts on focus on um, proactive code enforcement. There are two code enforcement officers that were transferred um, from civilian staff over into code enforcement in this coming year. And we will be addressing, I think, the desire is to address some additional code enforcement officers in the coming year. Parking parks. Um, this year we will be opening two parks in the city. Um, one from the uh, penny tax, and that's the Saluda River Greenway, um, at least phase one of the park. And then Bull Street uh, 20 Acres Park will be opening this year as well. Business license includes the addition of one additional revenue technician for enforcement of business license. And then business opportunities includes an increase in their commercial redevelopment and retention program, formerly known as the Facade um, Improvement Program. There is funding also for the Complete Count Program for the um, Promote the 2020 Census, as well as some funding for the Walt Bike Plan Outreach and Education. The 1920 General Fund Capital Replacement Program for $8 million this is the program that the city uses to fund our annual replacement for rolling stock and heavy equipment as well as parking. I mean, as well as, um, um, excuse me, technology replacements. The fire department um, reflects 12 vehicles at 1.6 million. Public works is 17 vehicles and equipment at 1.7. Parks and recreation is 13 vehicles and equipment at 675,000. And then police department reflects 62 vehicles and equipment for 3.1 million. And then we have technology upgrades of 750,000. Moving on with our enterprise funds, the first budget will be the, F, the proposed water and sewer operating budget. The proposed budget is 167 million, an increase of 5.2 or 3.2%. It does reflect a proposed rate increase of 7.06%. This rate increase is applied across both water sewer system and sewer system and is used to fund the capital improvement program as well as the associated debt service. Of course, the focus of, the goal of, the, um, of these revenue adjustments also helps to maintain our debt coverage ratio of 2.0 coverage um, for our helps um, with regards to our financial systems. As far as utility impacts, um, that would, for an in-city customer using an average of 800 cubic feet, would be a $4.26 a month increase per month. The water and sewer budget of the 167 million, operating budgets reflect $93 million of the total budget. 
Those were increases of less than 1% with focusing continuing on improving, um, enhancing customer service services, maintaining an efficient and effective water and sewer system through technology and process improvements such as the automated meter, um, automated meter infrastructure project, which is underway, mobile service orders, as well as improved mapping of our water distribution system. Staff reorganization and technology process improvements are aiming to provide high quality services that are affordable to our customers. Economic development is a $1.2 million budget and reflects an increase of 13,000 or 1%. This includes department staffing, operating costs, and contracts for partner agencies. Continuing with the water and sewer budget, depart non-departmental totals 48 million. The largest portion of that 48 million, of course, is our debt service, which is an increase of 2.3 million. Um, and then cash reserves are budgeted at 8.7, which is an increase of 3.9. Those are also um, as required for our debt coverage rate, our debt coverage and our, our funding mechanisms for our capital improvement program. Transfers out total 24.3 million which is a reduction of 3.5 over the current year. It includes 17.5 transferred to the, gen the Water and Sewer Capital Improvement Program. It maintains the indirect cost allocation to the general fund at the same levels of 4.1 million as the current year. Of the total $167 million budget, um, departments represent 58% of the total budget with followed by debt service at 23%. Of the departments, utilities represent 69% of the total operating budgets, followed by engineering at 13%. The capital improvement sewer, um, water and sewer capital improvement program for water projects for proposed for FY1920. You have a copy of the capital program in your packet. There is a total budget of, tw of 80 million for both water and sewer. Water reflects 25.5 million and wastewater is 54.5 million. Water and Sewer Capital Improvement Program um, reflects a priority on Clean Water 2020, programs to meet the EPA consent degree along with system expansion and water quality projects. We, of course, have lovely graphics that you'll get to see. The FY 1920 proposed budget for stormwater is a total operating budget of 14.3 million. It's an increase of 903,000 or 6.7% over the current year. This budget reflects continuation of the proposed rate adjustments adopted by City Council for the um, Comprehensive Stormwater Improvement Program. The stormwater fee will increase 78 cents per equivalent residential unit or ERU per month from $12. So the rate will go from $12.54 to $13.32 per month. The FY 1920 Capital Improvement Program for Stormwater is $30.5 million. It will be funded using $1.7 million in cash from the Stormwater Fund, and the remaining will be covered with bonds, um, including the um, green bonds that were recently um, issued. The total CIP over the next five years is $96 million for the Stormwater Program. And the Operating and Capital Improvement Program focuses on projects that meet the initiatives of alleviating nuisance flooding and promoting water quality in our stormwater. Engineering and Public Works makes up the largest majority of the, of the stormwater budget. Public Works is 30%. That includes the staffing and operations for the um, storm drain maintenance program as well as some construction projects. Engineering is 23% of that budget. Moving on, I'm on slide 28. Oh, can you go to slide five, Justin? Go to slide five. I'll keep going though so until it's loaded. The FY 1920 proposed parking fund budget is 8.8 .8 million. It's an increase of 165,000 or two percent over the current year. It reflects operating revenues of 8.5, an increase of 515,000 or six percent. Parking garage and, and parking meter revenue make up a majority of the increase in the revenues. Um, street meters and parking 
garages and lots, of course, are the majority of the source of the revenue for the parking fund. Non-moving non -moving violations or parking tickets revenues are actually down from prior years, which is attributed in part to the Passport app. And in, in other words, employees or, or customers have the ability to pay in advance of getting a parking ticket now. So that's um, helped with help help customers out definitely. We have reflected a use of fund balance of 96 million, which is a reduction of 344 thousand from the current fiscal year. The parking fund operating budget. Um, the operating for operating departments reflect 5.1 million, an increase of 195,000 or four percent. Parking services totals three million, no change from the current year. And parking facilities totals 1.7, an increase of 121,000 or seven percent. Reflects the addition of the annual support for cloud-hosted solutions, as well as the addition of the Divine Street parking garage. Debt service is 2.7%, which is a reduction of 100,000 from the previous year. Parking debt service is the majority of the allocation of the parking fund budget, followed by parking services and parking facilities. Moving on with the proposed hospitality tax budget. The, proposed, the hospitality budget is proposed at 12.1 million. It is no change from the current year. It is a flat budget. There are four designated funding categories of the hospitality budget. The committee allocations represent 2.1 million. It's the same as current year. Line item agencies reflect are, are reflected at current year levels as well. Um, requests have come in from increases from line item agencies that will be addressed by council, I think, at a later date. City council allocations reflect commitments made to prior years in one new request. Um, those would be multi-year commitments that have been made and reflect from current year. Transfers out reflect a slight increase based on the debt service schedule. The transfer to the general fund is the same as it is current year and it has been for the past several years. There is no change in the transfer to the general fund. And, and so, Missy, I, I think that definitely needs to be noted because there is some misinformation that we have increased the transfer to the general fund to meet our general fund obligations based on the committee is getting the same amount and the transfer is the same except for debt service. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So the transfer to the general fund has remained three million dollars for the past at least five years or more. Correct. Yes, sir. We're. And the, it's flat because at this point we are seeing limited revenue growth. So we're trying to maintain current year commitment, prior year commitments and limits, but of course limits um, opportunity to fund new initiatives um, as we continue to monitor collections for the revenue, for the hospitality tax fund. But right now those are projections are flat. The proposed accommodations tax fund is, is 2.6 million. It does reflect a $90,000 increase, a 3.5% increase over the current year. Accommodations tax allocations are based on requirements of South Carolina state law. South Carolina state law requires that 25,000 be transferred to the general fund. 30% is allocated to advertising and promotion of tourism. 65% is allocated for tourism and related expenditures and 5% for general purposes. The committee allocation is based on prior, allocate, prior, prior city council direction of 85% to Experience Columbia and 15% to Lake, to Lake Murray. Final allocations are, of course, subject to city council approval. 5% allocations do not reflect any specific allocation. 5% represents the remaining amount to be allocated. Those are used as general purposes um, or like general fund uses. In those 5%, we do not reflect any specific allocations. However, historically, these funds have been used to fund Together We Can Read an initiative and one Columbia's general fund portion of their funding. With that, that is the proposed FY1920 budget for the City of Columbia to include both operating budget. The $357 million is just our operating budget. The total capital improvement bu budget is $110 million in addition to that making up water, sewer, and stormwater combined. Thank you, Ms. Kaufman. Okay. Thank you, Missy. Thank you very much.
Uh, questions of Ms. Kaufman? We go into the public hearing. Thank you. Um, Make no. a motion to move with the proposed budget. Oh, we got a public hearing first. Public hearing first. So we have um, <coughs> some citizens who signed up to speak. I assume folks who want to speak for Historic Columbia want to speak on, on, on the budget. We will not be taking up H tax at this meeting. It'll, that'll be done at a, at a, at a, at a later meeting. Uh, but um, but it's all rolled up into this budget. So if if, uh, if you care to be heard now, that, that's fine as well. Add, this budget does not reflect allocations to specific yeah, it does groups. Not. It, it, this it just does not. allocates the funding. This just approves a uh, minor funding the, the large, in the, the budget. Yeah, right. Yeah. This does not allocate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did y'all get that? Okay. We, we, All right. <laughs> All right. We got that. Yeah. Uh, when, I'm not worried about you. I'm oh, sure I'm the, sorry. The, the, the public gets it. Um, all right. Um, Don Mills Campbell. Good evening. Evening. I'm Dawn Mills Campbell. I am a proud member of the Historic Columbia Board of Trustees. Since 1994, Historic Columbia and the City of Columbia have partnered in the preservation of some of the most significant historic assets in the Midlands, including the Robert Mills House, the Mann Simons site, and the Majeska Simkins site, which are owned by the city. Your support allows us to use local history as a tool to educate the public to draw visitors to the region, and to establish preservation as an economic driver. This fiscal year, over 40,000 people of all ages and backgrounds from across the country have visited our managed sites for tours, public programs, festivals, and special events. And while the six buildings and 14 acres of grounds, of which we are stewards, serve as the most dynamic local history destinations in the region, we tell stories that go far beyond the city center and offer programs that do the same. Highlights include the Columbia Jewish Heritage Initiative, now in its fourth year, which has garnered awards for research, documentation, programming, and interpretation of the capital city's Jewish communities. Jubilee, our festival of black history and culture that continues to surpass previous efforts each year, drawing thousands of visitors who enjoy performances, tours, hands-on education, and entertainment, and preservation efforts at the Majeska Simpkins site, where, thanks to a civil rights grant from the National Park Service, the property stands poised for enhanced interpretation through new exhibits and marker space late next year. Meanwhile, the Historic Columbia staff has applied its model for engagement in support of separate pro projects, including an exciting new partnership with REN, the Women's Rights and Empowerment Network, to bring the Columbia City of Women project to life and the Columbia SC63, the collaborative initiative to share Columbia's civil rights uh, story, both of which receive dedicated funding from the City of Columbia. So on behalf of the Historic Columbia and your constituents seeking to better understand our very rich and complex history, thank you for your past support and for your continued support. Thank you. You're like perfectly on time too. Uh, uh. <laughs> Everyone take note, all right? <laughs> From a pro, from a pro, apparently. Thank you so much, Ms. Mills Campbell. Um, Ann Warner. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Ann Warner, and I'm the CEO of REN. On behalf of the Columbia City of Women Steering Committee and partner organizations, many of whom are uh, with us this evening. I'll wave. I want to thank the city for its support of the Columbia City of Project, City of Women project last year, which helped us get this project off the ground and leverage additional private funding. The City of Women is a project that recognizes remarkable women of Columbia's past and present, celebrates their victories, engages the community through their stories, and inspires future leaders. The initiative is the brainchild of Rachel Hodges, former First Lady of South Carolina, and is being implemented by Historic Columbia and Wren. 
It has received funding from the City of Columbia, the John S. and James L. Knight Fund at the Central Carolina Community Foundation, and other private donors. Additional partners include the University of South Carolina, Richland School District 1, and the Richland Library. Our project is the first of its kind in South Carolina. Currently, only one of the 41 streets in downtown Columbia, Lady Street, kind of attempts to recognize a woman. Um, but it does not reveal her true name or identity. The first First Lady of the United States, Martha Washington. Less than 4% of the 206 historical mar markers in Richland County are specifically named after women. We know that there are many more women who have helped shape our city, and this project helps us to tell their stories. So what have we done so far? We have honored 12 remarkable women in our inaugural honoree group. From trailblazing educator Celia Dal Saxon, artist Anna Hayward Taylor, Supreme Court Justice Jean Toll, Coach Don Staley. We're telling their stories through a website, ColumbiaCityOfWomen.com, that includes a digital map and extensive content. We publicly launched the project in March with a sellout event at the Columbia Museum of Art. More than 400 people gathered to celebrate our first 12 honorees. Since the launch, Historic Columbia and Wren have continued to raise awareness through digital and educational programming. We've established buzz across the city and the state, with city representatives from Greenville to Florence to Charleston expressing interest in establishing a city of women in their cities. To first fulfill the potential of this, uh, to fulfill the potential of this project in Columbia, we request continued funding to help us take it to the next level, to honor more women, raise more awareness, engage more people, and create permanent markers to recognize the honorees throughout the city. We are working with private funders and One Columbia on a potential permanent art project to be a major attraction in downtown Columbia. These activities tell a fascinating story to attract and inspire people around the state and country to visit Columbia. Cities around the country are rethinking how they recognize traditionally underrepresented groups in their public spaces. Columbia is doing something truly remarkable, remarkable by investing in an innovative public-private partnership that celebrates the diverse contributions of women from across history and backgrounds. With your continued support, the Columbia City of Women Project will help us honor our past and recommit to an ever more inclusive, welcoming, and vibrant tomorrow. Thank you for your consideration. That's on point. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, um, thank you. Um, those are the only two folks I have speaking from Historic Columbia uh, and or um, from Ran on the City of Women. Um, we have Fielding Pringle, the public defender. And thank you all. Everyone's excited about City of Women. Uh, very excited and, and looking forward to supporting the, the, the effort and the initiative. Uh, the first meeting was electric. Um, so I do have, I have to note that the honorary naming of Washington Street after Sarah Mae Fleming is something we did several years ago. Uh, so we did a whole lot more of that. So all right. it's exciting. Madam Public Defender. Hi, good evening, Mayor Benjamin, members of council. Uh, I am Fielding Pringle. I am your public defender here in Richland County, and this is Jasmine Burns uh, of Nelson Mullins. And she is here uh, in support of us. Uh, she and George Cawthon have, have been very, very supportive um, throughout our efforts. Yes, ma'am. Well, Can you hear me now? Um, I'm going to be very direct. My husband tells me I can't say anything in three minutes or less, so I'm going to talk fast. He and can? And be, yeah, exactly, <laughs> really. Pot and kettle. <laughs> very good point. Um, just by way of background, we entered into a contract with the city uh, beginning in 2015 to fund the services for two dedicated full-time public defenders um, starting in 2015. This followed a state proviso that required us to stop spending state money and go to city council, go to cities, municipalities, and request the funding. I will tell you, this city um, has been ahead of the curve and way out front, and you guys did the right thing by funding your public defenders back in 2015, avoiding the litigation that these other municipalities are now embroiled in across the state that is still continuing. Uh, so why am I here? Uh, you guys provided funding at the amount of $100,000 starting in 2015. As I said, I've provided two full-time dedicated lawyers in addition to another attorney who works in your homeless court. Um, it's simply not enough. I am requesting an increase. The increase that we need is really twofold. 
We have um, one issue is that our budget was never whole. I didn't make the first agreement, Mr. Strickler did, so I can't really speak to the details of that. But in looking at my budget numbers and putting together my funding uh, analysis for the county, for the state, I'm coming in at 54,000 under. So we are providing two lawyers, another attorney to staff homeless court. And so to make my budget whole, I am asking you for $54,000 just to get us to that point so that the city is fully funding the attorneys that are being provided. The, the second request, the second part of the request is I am seeking to add another attorney. Um, obviously, that's a higher request. That would put it to a total of 125. That would allow me to add another attorney and bring us whole. The reason is our cases are rising. Um, the city is doing a good job of addressing its backlog. I know they've been very aggressive and are very invested in doing so. Um, the result is our caseloads are going up. Since 2015, our caseloads, we handled 743 cases in 2015. We're almost up to 1,100 now. So uh, we, we desperately need an additional attorney um, to do that. The city has placed a value on protecting the liberty of its citizens and funding the public defenders and doing that uh, at the inception when this proviso first came out. And I applaud you for doing that. Um, and, I, and I would be more than happy to provide any information, answer any questions um, that would be helpful to you in, our con in considering our request. Sure. Thank you, Fielding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Councilor Burns, short timer. Thank you. Jasmine's taking the clerkship with Judge Gurgle in Charleston, so she's leaving us. Oh. Uh, yeah, she's leaving us. So. All right. Um, on, Anyone else to speak on the budget? Uh, thank you, Council, for the opportunity. My name is Hans Pauling. I'm with the Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office. Uh, Mr. Gibson is under the weather and would not be able to be here to speak with you personally. Um, our current budget for this year is proposed at $215,817. Uh, we are actually requesting an increase of $127,681 specifically for our special city prosecutor. Um, up until between 1997 and 2012, we had a special city prosecutor assigned that handled city cases on the violent crime load. Um, in 2012, we then requested two additional prosecutors. They were included, but then the special city prosecutor was eliminated. Uh, currently, um, in our office right now, we have approximately 3,831 pending um, City of Columbia warrants and of those 524 for violent crimes. Um, with respect, these numbers alone do illustrate the wisdom of actually the city council's vision in 1997 by appointing a special city prosecutor to handle specifically violent crimes in the city of Columbia. Um, we have the same issues, obviously, that the public defenders have. Uh, sometimes the caseloads start to increase and grow in the workload with it. Um, we're humbly requesting that the special city prosecutor be funded again. Um, it has not been funded, I believe, in, since 2012. Um, I've been working with the solicitor's office since 2011 um, and have primarily done city prosecution cases. Um, I thank you all for your continued support over the years, and we would ask for the addition of that money in the budget. Thank you. If you have any questions. Hans, I do yes, have a couple questions, and if, if you can't answer them, yes, if, if you could get with Byron and, and get back to us. But just for us, I mean, we understand extreme importance of, of both sides and that both sides need adequate funding in order for the system to work. Um, no, Fielding has, has presented the folks that she has and that we're funding for her are, are dedicated. I know and I remember the change that you're talking about. We had Dolly, she was a city prosecutor, she was kind of doing all of our stuff. And then I remember, I guess Dan did the changes. The two that you're talking about that we're, that we're funding now, that's in General Sessions Court? Yes. Okay. We, currently, um, we have Sakisha Tobin, who's working in the domestic violence court in municipal city court. Okay. She's been there for several years now. Okay. And so that's one of the ones that we're funding now. Um, up until uh, Mr. Gibson assumed the office in January, I was part of the city team, and we had a dedicated group of between eight and ten prosecutors who were specifically focused on city crimes. Mm -hmm. The city only funded two of those people. Um, all the rest were funded by outside Richland County sources. Um, and we did handle 100% of the city uh, defendants. They may sometimes be linked in with Richland County charges as well. But Dolly Garfield was the city team leader 
until she left the office in December of 2016. And then Vance Eaton became the city team leader in 2017 through 2018. Mm -hmm. um, we had up until very recently been divided by regions of the county and region five was the city. And I was a proud member of region five since November of 2011. So now we're divided more by types of crimes and the violent crime team has eight prosecutors on it and we're looking to add the special city prosecutor as a member of that team. So the two that we're currently funding, you're saying that those are, those are dedicated to the city, they're not handling other things. At, we're, not, we're not supplementing a salary for someone who's doing other things, they're just for the city? Uh, not that I'm aware. If they're a drug prosecutor, they may have the bulk of their cases are Columbia City drug cases because they work better with the uh, narcotics group in the city. Um, but we are now divided by crime as opposed to by region <coughs> that we were prior to January of 2019. And so the addition you're asking for for a city prosecutor would go back to having the person that is prosecuting cases in municipal court full time? Well, in general sessions, Just city homicide, city robbery, city kidnapping, city rape, yes. So that we can have someone dedicated to city violent crime prosecution. All right, so it, it maybe, and I'd ask um, Ms. Knox if she could, it, it just would be easier, because I know y'all are all structured differently as well. Yes. It would be easy maybe if Ms. Knox could get with you guys and just understand the structure of both and make sure that we are um, funding what we're getting. And, and I know this always comes up, and this is not for you, directed at you, but um, I think Mr. Rickerman would agree, you know, city residents are county residents as well yes, and so you know I, I, we appreciate and we need the structure of that but if we're funding city prosecutors then we need additional you know, sir additional yeah, services right. in addition to the yeah the, the I'm, I'm a richland county funded prosecutor right. who does city homeless court so i okay. totally understand okay so totally. so anyway so we so we understand the structure just so we can make sure oh, so that we're the point, the point she was right. making is that people who live in the city also pay county taxes. Uh, so uh, there's an ongoing conversation always with the county as if we live in a, a bubble when the reality is that we pay city taxes and county taxes. Um, but this is not for you, but just, just internalize it. Anything, anything you all need, we'll Absolutely. make sure we can get it for you. Thank we, you. And, and Thank make you. sure the Sisler knows we love him. And, and right. we hope he feels better. Yeah. All right, good deal. Uh, no one else is, well, I'm signed up to speak on, on the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Badura, is there a motion? Yes, uh, make a motion to approve the budget for um, 29, uh, item six. Items, uh, item six and seven. Moving to second discussion. With the previous question, Clark Colorado. Mr. Rickman? No. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. All right, um, let the record reflect that the uh, budget, again, has no tax increases for the 10th year in a row, or thereabouts? No tax increase, okay. All right, um, public, uh, public hearing on the ordinances, uh, first reading. Uh, uh, <clears throat> item, eight. Yes. item eight, ordinance number 2019-040 amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 23, Utilities and Engineering, Article 5, Water and Sewer Rates, Section 23-150, Discharge of Septic Tank Waste and Repealing, Section 23-151. Move approval. Use of septic tanks. I'm trying to understand, is this a public hearing on these ordinances as well? Yes, because they okay. include fees. Okay, gotcha. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone here to speak in favor of or against this? Seeing none, I move the previous, uh, is there a motion? Uh, move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion. With the previous question, Clark, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Um, I have ordinance number 2019-41. Uh, uh, the Code and Ordinances, uh, Columbia, Chapter 23, Utilities Engineering, as it relates to sewer rates, water sewer rates, industrial per, uh, user permit fees. Uh, is anyone here speaking in favor of or against this? Is there, uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Discussion? 
Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. All right. <coughs> ordinance number 2019-42, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City, uh, Chapter 23, Utilities Engineering, Article 4, Wastewater Service, Sections 23-112, Violations and Penalty. Is anyone here to speak in favor of or against this? Is there a motion? So move. Second. Move and second. Discussion? Seeing none, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Um, Madam City Manager, do we have a, a motion? An amendment? Item 11? Do we come back to that? Sure, Mr. Mayor. We come back to that? So, okay, we'll move on to item 12 for right now. Uh, we'll leave to go back and invite uh, uh, John Ando, the Executive Director and CEO of the Comet. Excuse me one second. Well, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. John Ando, Executive Director of the Comet. I'm here before you today to uh, request approval from City Council of our proposed 2019 operating and capital budget uh, for the Central Midlands Regional Transit Authority. Um, if you, what I'm passing out to you is a hard copy of the budget, and I'll just summarize this uh, budget in greater detail and answer any questions. Um, this is um, as, as we discussed at the previous work session, under uh, the South Carolina Code of Laws, we are, to, as a regional transportation authority, we're, to put, we're supposed to present and seek approval of our operating and capital budget from each of our member agencies. We have presented this budget to Richland County, Lexington County, City of Forest Acres have each approved uh, this budget, so um, City of Columbia is our last member agency that we do need to present this to. Um, in on page eight gives you a summary of our revenues, and uh, we are looking at a $29,800,835 operating budget, which um, is a change of 13%. Um, you'll see on page nine that $23,270,916 is attributed to our operations and 6529919 is attributed to our capital. Uh, the reason why we have a 13% increase is primarily due to the use of more federal funding to support operation and capital needs. This fiscal year we are going to be purchasing, or this upcoming fiscal year, we plan to purchase four additional vehicles, which includes two trolleys, two low-floor gasoline-powered cutaways to operate in the rural areas, continued renovation of the transit center at Laurel and Sumter, intelligent transportation systems, bike share stations in downtown Columbia, additional bus shelters and benches within the service area, redesigning our website, and what is treated as capital expenses under FTA terms as mobility management, training and development of staff, and then purchasing computer hardware and software. Our operational expenses will include transit operations, marketing administration for services within Richland and Lexington counties, security on our buses, transit centers, and bus stops. We do uh, um, do special duty contracts with City of Columbia, Richland County, City of Casey, and City of West Columbia to patrol uh, the various buses, bus stops, and transit facilities. We have a van pool program we've implemented, preventative maintenance on our buses and bus facilities, and then the continuation of the Lyft Uber subsidy, the, bi the Blue Bike program, which allows Comet riders to access the Blue Bike system uh, unlimited uh, for 45 minute sessions, and the start and the development of a new volunteer transportation and mileage reimbursement program, as well as a subsidized taxi script program for seniors and persons with disabilities within the Columbia urbanized area. Pages 10 and 11 gives you a detailed explanation of those expenses. Page 12 gives you a summary of our, how the Comet is funded and how we get the $28 million, $29 million to cover our overall costs. And uh, page 13 gives you a detailed explanation of each of our line item expenses, 
7, 16, and 17 goes into further detail of uh, salaries, fringe benefits, membership contributions, contractual services, costs that we pay for security enforcement. And then the last part of this presentation is we've started to implement a service equity policy at the Comet. The board adopted this policy back in March, and basically um, we are calculating services based on contributions that each jurisdiction provides to the transit authority so that we're ensuring that we're only uh, running services in the respective jurisdictions that are contributing appropriately. You will notice that on page 18 um, that, pardon me, I should say on page 20, that 55.48% of the services that the Comet provides are within the city of Columbia. And then 29% uh, is in Richland County, less than 1% is in Eastover, 1% is in Forest Acres, Two per, about 3% in West Columbia, 3% in Casey, 1% in Springdale, and then um, about 3% uh, between the other jurisdictions that we serve. And with that in mind, I'll be happy to answer any questions about our operating capital budget, if there are any. John, so does the two, the contribution to, from Lexington and Newberry, do, they, do those cover the actual costs? They do. Um, what we've been doing is because the Columbia urbanized area consists of the urbanized portions of Richland and Lexington counties, you will find on pages um, 18 of how we split the federal funding between each of those uh, jurisdictions in page 19. So in essence, uh, in the case of Lexington County, they're contributing about 200 and um, $28,771, we're matching that 50% with federal funds. The balance of the federal funds that would have been allocated to Lexington County is being redistributed to Richland County because Lexington County doesn't have the appropriate match to spend their fair share of the allocation. So with that, that's how uh, their services are covered. You'll notice that we do not pay, uh, the transit system does not operate in a large portion of the county because they just don't have the local match to warrant additional services beyond what they have today. Any other questions for Mr. Endo? The will of council. Thank you for your information, John. Very helpful. Right. I, do, I do need an action, though, from the council on our operating and capital budget. We're, going we're, not, for we're not prepared to take action. We're not prepared? Not tonight. Okay. Okay. Now, the I, other municipalities, I understand you to say, John, has you presented it to them, and there has been a vote? Yeah, they have approved it. This is the last member agency that we're waiting a confirmation from. Mm -hmm. So the confirmation is in terms of a vote, vote and not for information. That, that is correct. Is that correct? I believe he's requesting a vote to actually approve the budget. I think there, there was some discussion um, previously as to whether or not this council felt we were in a position to do that today. Uh, I'm, I had stepped out, but I believe what I heard was the decision was that we would receive it as information today um, and not yes. take any action today. And I, and I, I personally uh, don't think I can vote on a budget that we have no control over. Uh, so I don't think you're going to get my support if we're ever going to take action. Uh, but the reason I'm telling you that is I, I don't think we can have any control on, over your budget. And for me, it's not the appropriate thing to do. The city manager, John, and the city attorney don't recommend that the council take action on the item. It was our understanding it was for information's sake that you needed to present the budget as a formality. Um, and we feel like you've done that and they've taken it for information. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, I'll have to uh, consult with our, our legal counsel just because of the, the state law that basically. But John, mentioned. I've been back here for two years and nobody's come here before. And there were a lot of 
there's a lot of questions in here, and I don't think that any of us are going to take responsibility for something that we can't control. Sure. And I think over probably the last five to seven years, the comment has not come to us as a regional authority. They've made contracts, they've renewed contracts, they've spent money without this group being involved. So I don't think that they can come back to us now and ask us to obligate ourselves to a budget, both past, present, and future that we have no control no over. I respect that, and that's one thing that we're trying to do is start making sure that we're operating in compliance with the Regional Transportation Authority law that the state has created for RTAs. Um, I can't speak for actions of the past, but we're just trying to make sure we're in compliance. So, John, we'll receive it as information today. If you want to get the RTA's attorney um, to contact Ms. Knox and, you know, if there's something different than if we're in the future, if we have to take action then we can revisit that. But today, okay. it's the decision to council just to receive it as information. Okay, appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much you for coming. Thank you. And do we... Um, do we have a deal? Nope. This isn't what we talked about. No. I believe is there you most, all have is there, item 11 left. Um, you've got there a might proposed be some proposed voice amendment, but at this time, I'm not sure if you want to go back to an executive back. session and discuss would, it or... I think we would want to go back into executive session and discuss what has okay. been presented to us. Okay. Madam Mayor, Pro Tem, I move to return to executive session based on the previous announcements. Is there a second? Second. It's been probably moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, no, we were going back in executive session because... We to come back and vote on this yeah you want to go ahead let's want to go ahead let's, hear, let's, hear, from, do that? Okay. let's hear from dr mill first and then we can go to executive session if that's all right mm -hmm. all right no, dr mill <laughs> yeah please i think you only said this in who signed up to speak so Good evening. Good evening. Um, with great pride, I must say that the rich members for Parks and Recreation City of Columbia actually followed through what I asked them to do. We are in the process of finding scholarship funding for summer camp. I want to thank Mr. Davis very much for letting us do this. And I suggested that they come up with something creative to encourage uh, donation. As you see in front of you, there is a flyer. On June 28th, the City of Columbia young adults are going to roast Mama G. It's going to be at TAPS. And the uh, donations from it, we're going to assist young people who may come from single family homes and need funding uh, to go to summer camp. So if you hear about this, uh, yes, I will have to sit there and not say anything. Impossible. <laughs> I understand, too, that um, the bets have been being placed already, <laughs> if I can do it or not. <laughs> I'm going to try. But they, they came up, they were very creative with this. I wish to thank TAPS for uh, being a part of it, uh, DPK Printing. We have a lot of businesses who are supporting us. We have young people coming in from Philadelphia, Washington, California, Mars, Venus, no, who have, um, are waiting for this opportunity a very long time. To roast you? Pardon, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Because they have things to say. I told them, be aware because I get to go and speak last. But thank you very much for your continued support. Looking forward to a great summer camp. Uh, Mayor Benjamin, thank you. City Council, thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. Um, checks made out to TAPS? It would be to, chat, to taps. checks, and you can go online to TAPS, okay. yes, for this. Right. So you. it should be, in, I think they're going to film it, too. Thank yeah. you. All right, congratulations, Mama Jane. Thank you for being you. All right, uh, Mr. Uh, Duval. It's been moved in second. All right. We, uh, 
Motion second uh, on the floor. Uh, move, we go, mo uh, move we go back into executive session based on the previous announced um, reasons. All right. Second by Ms. Uh, Devine. In discussion with the previous question, Clerk Carrell. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Badura. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. 